in the book of Second Thessalonians, there is a prophecy that says that the day of the coming of the Lord will not come except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Scholars have dated the book of Second Thessalonians to between the years 51 and 52 CE. In 1506 CE, the seventh head of the beast, the Holy Roman Empire, began building the Roman Church Temple, St. Peter's Basilica. They were building this temple from 1506 to 1626 CE. In 1512, Christopher Marcellus, a member of the Fifth Lateran Council, publicly addressed Pope Julius II as another god on the earth. Five years later, in 1517, the Protestant Reformation began when a monk named Martin Luther nailed 95 theses on the church door, protesting the Roman Church doctrines. That was when the alleged falling away began and the fulfillment of 2 Thessalonians 2.3. Then in 1894, Pope Leo XIII proclaimed himself to be God in the completed temple. That was the fulfillment of 2 Thessalonians 2.4. Many people have assumed that would be the Jerusalem temple, but the word used in 2 Thessalonians literally means any heathen temple, and the word translated as God also means God's representative. So you can see the fulfillment of the prophecy in 2 Thessalonians 2 began in the early 1500s and was completed in the late 1800s. According to the World Christian Database, there are now over 9,000 Christian denominations throughout the world. So that falling away and the proclaiming to be God by the man of sin already happened. Next in 2 Thessalonians, it says, For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. In other words, at the time this was written, around 51 CE, the mystery of iniquity was already working, meaning the deception had already started at that time. Then it says, He who now letteth will be taken away, then shall that wicked be revealed, even him whose coming is after the working of Satan, with all power and signs and lying wonders. So it's saying here that the deception had already started in 51 CE, and those who let that deception work will be taken out of the way at some point, and that wickedness will be revealed when the Lord returns. So those who let the deception work will not be taken away until God returns. That's what this says. And we know when that happens. Jesus told us God will return after the tribulation of the days, the 1260 day period, which is 1260 years. Since God has not returned yet, that means the deception is still working. And he whose coming is after the working of Satan, in verse 9, likely refers to the man of sin in verse 3, but it can refer to anyone involved in that deception. The man of sin who proclaimed himself God in 1894 was only one of many who have been involved in the deception. Then 2 Thessalonians goes on to say, And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they received not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. And for this cause God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie, that they all might be damned who believe not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. First of all, the word translated as righteousness, we know means integrity, virtue, and justice that is acceptable to God. Integrity means an unimpaired condition, soundness. And soundness means free from error or fallacy, logically valid. So, unrighteousness is the opposite of that. 
So this is saying that those who lack integrity are deceivable with all deceivableness of unrighteousness. In other words, with all gullibility of the lack of integrity. It's talking about how gullible people are when they cannot use valid logical reasoning. It's saying that those individuals who lack integrity are so gullible that they do not receive the truth. It doesn't say here which truth it's referring to, but Jesus said that he is the truth. So those who receive truth are receiving Jesus, according to these texts, because the truth is Jesus in these texts. It's code. The deceivableness of those who lack integrity, in other words, the gullibility of those who lack soundness, in other words, the gullibility of those who lack valid reasoning skills, those gullible, it says, will be sent a strong delusion So whatever the strong delusion is, it's the gullible who receive it. It's those who lack integrity or soundness. It's those who do not adhere to valid reasoning. So if it's those who lack logical reasoning skills who are falling for the delusion, then the delusion must be easily disproved by using logical reasoning. So that is extremely important. The strong delusion in 2 Thessalonians, we are told, can be easily disproved using valid logical reasoning. However, the gullible, those who will not listen to valid reasoning, will fall for the lie anyway. The very definition of the word delusion is a belief held with strong conviction despite superior evidence to the contrary. In other words, a person who holds to a delusion is someone who will continue to believe a lie no matter how much superior evidence you show them that the lie is false. And the writer of 2 Thessalonians here, which, by the way, 50% of scholars do not believe was Paul, is saying that those who are deceived by the strong delusion will be provided with logically valid arguments that show their beliefs are false, but they will not listen to those valid arguments. They will ignore the truth. And clearly, it says, the delusion will be believed by those who lack integrity or soundness. The delusion will be believed by those who do not use valid reasoning, and they will not believe the truth. Instead, they will be following him whose coming is after the working of Satan. Well, Jesus told us who that was. He said in Matthew 16, 23, that Peter was Satan. Just before that, in verses 17 through 20, Jesus said that the church would be built upon Peter, and whoever thou shall bind on the earth shall be bound in heaven, and whoever thou shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. That is a reference to Hosea 14.9. The ways of the Lord are right, and the just shall walk in them, but the transgressors will fall therein. This was explained in the chapter before, Hosea chapter 13, verses 3 through 8. It says that the Lord, Yahweh, will be unto the chaff as a lion, leopard, and bear. Daniel 7 tells us the lion, leopard, and bear are beasts, and Revelation 13 tells us that the beast with seven heads and ten horns is like a lion, leopard, and bear. In other words, Hosea 13 is telling us that Yahweh is going to be the beast to the chaff. 
Jesus explained in Matthew 13 that the chaff, in other words, the tares, will be gathered first and bound in bundles in order to be burned. The beast that the tares worship is Yahweh. Jesus explained in Matthew 16, 18 and 19 that the church will be built upon Peter and that the church will bind some people and loosen others. This is confirming again that the tares are bound in the churches. Then notice this. This is extremely important. In Matthew 16, 20, Jesus told his disciples that they should tell no man that he was Jesus the Christ. Jesus himself told us that he was not the Christ. Then right after that, in verses 20 through 24, Peter begins rebuking him, and Jesus turned to Peter and said, Get thee behind me, Satan. So let's get this straight. First, Jesus says the church will be built upon Peter. Then Jesus says some people will be bound by the church and others loosened by the church. And then Jesus says that the disciples should never say that he is Jesus the Christ. Then he says Peter is Satan. This is as logically clear as it can get. Jesus is saying that the church was built upon Satan, and the tares in the church will be bound by the church itself. So the strong delusion mentioned in 2 Thessalonians 2 is, again, something that can be easily disproven. The author says in verse 10 that those who are sent the strong delusion have deceivableness, in other words, gullibility, of unrighteousness, in other words, lack of integrity, lack of soundness, lack of valid reasoning. They have a delusion. In other words, they have a belief that they will not let go of even in the face of superior evidence to the contrary. Will what do Christians consider the most superior evidence of all? The words of Jesus himself. And Jesus himself told his disciples not to call him Jesus the Christ, and that Peter, the founder of the church, was Satan. And how many Christians are ignoring Jesus himself today? How many Christians are calling him Christ and following the doctrines set forth by Peter and Paul? The Christian churches are the strong delusion. For more information, please see the playlist Bible's Countdown to the Meteorite and Rescue or the playlist False Doctrines Revealed. There are also free printable charts on my website, indigoflower.net. Thank you to those who make this work possible. If you liked this video and want to see more like it, please consider providing support. I hope you're doing well, and I will talk to you next week.